So it's another beautiful Virginia morning and I'm off to Dayton this week. So I won't be doing any riding this week, but I do plan to take a trip to the Air Force Museum while I'm over there, or it's now called the Museum of the Air Force. I don't know what they've done. It's been quite a few years since I've been back there. So I'm looking forward to that. Going over there for another class for work. So no riding video this week, but I'll probably have some other, some other exciting stuff coming up. Okay, so we made it through the last day of class. Everyone worked really hard. We stayed late a couple of nights and got everything done. And so we're gonna be able to take a little bit of time before we get on that plane today. And we're gonna head over to the museum, National Museum of the Air Force. The last time I was here, they were working on the third hangar and I've driven by it a couple of times this week. It looks to me like they have four hangars. I know some of the airplanes that are in there because I've, I've been to the Museum of the Air Force several times, uh, but the guy that I'm taking to the airport with me has never been there I and mean, he's never been to Ohio. So we're gonna go through the Air Force Museum today. I'm glad that we did everything that we did in class, got everything busted out, and we're able to take a couple of hours before we head to the airport today. So this part here is the early early years of flight I don't know how well this will turn out on the video but they have a blimp hanging up up there and then of course some of the early gliders and kites and all that from from World War one and prior to World War one seems like wars always made us invent better stuff usually it was to kill somebody so now we're getting into some of the more modern era oh this little airplane here this is an A-37. This is the attack version of a T-37. I used to work on these airplanes, not the attack version, but the trainer version in Laughlin Air Force Base in Del Rio, Texas in the late 80s and early 90s. Just amazing, the two different variants of that same little airplane. There's really not much to that airplane. It's built by Cessna. MiG-17. It's kind of amazing. You look at how you look at how small this airplane is. I mean, really for a, for a fighter, it's it's pretty small. But when you look at it and see how small it really is, when they're flying around, they seem seems like they're bigger, but they're really not that big. Now I did see one over here that I'm going to go take a look at. See the tag on the neck. Uh, what's the tag on it? Uh, we'll get some good insider information here. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. That tag says, do not open the cockpit without notifying the operation. It's because the Soviets use radium on all the instruments so that they glow. Right. And if you go in that cockpit, it's, it's higher radiation than you're supposed to have. How interesting. Yeah, we've taken a lot of 
old instruments out because right. of that, but since nobody goes in there. How interesting. See, that's a fun fact that you don't normally get if you're just walking around. Thank you. So they used radium on the on the dials to to make them glow, which of course radium we know is radioactive. Now I came over here to this one because this aircraft right here, I've never worked on one, I've never flown one, but I built I don't know how many models of the P-51D. This aircraft is probably my favorite aircraft of all time. I just I just love the look of this. And I have seen them fly and the sound that they make, it's just amazing. It sounds wonderful. It's just, oh, it's just a beautiful sound. I'm gonna see if I can get a better picture of that little tag there. Now, I don't know if it's in English or not because I can't really see it from where I'm standing. But, yeah, it does. Contact installation radiation safety office before entering that's pretty interesting now this here is an airplane that I have worked on I started off my Air Force career working on the F4 this one is an F4C model I worked on D models and I started off right here at Wright Pat uh, in Ohio my airplane that I worked on was a MIG killer so my airplane also had two stars on it just like this but from what I understand my airplane has been moved to the boneyard it's it's interesting coming back nearly 30 years after I've worked on them and I used to think this airplane was so much bigger than what it really is and I mean we used to crawl down these intakes to do inspections we had to do inspections of the of the jet intakes after flight and pre-flights and things like that um, these radomes, there's just a couple of bolts on there and it opens and swings open to reveal the radar and we had to put all these these down locks on. We very seldom flew with this kind of configuration. Um, we usually had the pylons and we had, we, we, we didn't fly very much the, two, the 370 tanks. We normally flew with a 600 gallon centerline tank. I, I don't really know why, but that's typically what we flew at Wright Pat and flew with the 600 tank. A lot has changed since I was here last. Oh, really? Yeah, I used to work here at Wright Pat oh. when they had F4s. Yeah. So I worked on the on the D models there at, at, at Wright Pat, and I was I used to be part of the International Plastic Modeler Society. Yeah. And they used to meet here. I don't know if they still do. I've never. This heard. was back in the late 90s yeah. or the uh, late 80s, and at that time, one of the guys that worked here was part of our club, uh -huh. and we would have our meetings here on Sunday nights. Yeah. And uh, one Sunday night they opened up. A few of the airplanes so I've been in the B-36 I've been in the B-24 I sat in the cockpit of the 262 wow. you know and they, they opened up all these airplanes and of course all of us model guys you know cameras everywhere and taking pictures of all that stuff so it was it was pretty so cool to see some of that stuff I worked on the D models here at Wright Pat yeah I was an Evo and G model okay yeah uh, I don't know if you know this but all the aircraft on sticks are owned by the museum okay yeah are all the rest of them on loan no, no, no. These are all museums. Some, some artifacts. Oh, you're talking there. about the ones outside different places. Yep. Yeah. Now, is that just here, or is that nationwide? Uh, at Air Force bases. At Air Force bases. Yep. So any airplane on on a pedestal at an Air Force base belongs to the museum. Yep. Well, that's an interesting little fact. Yeah, and this is the largest and oldest military aircraft museum in the world. Yeah. We've we've got over a million square feet. In fact, the Air and Space Museum in Washington yep. fit inside one of our hangars. I've been there a couple of times, and it, and it does seem small. Yeah. And you both have unique stuff. Yes. And you both have one-of-a-kind stuff. And uh, our next big acquisition is going to be one of the current Air Force One. So Really? One of the 747s? Yep. So when they get the new ones, which are already under contract, yep. I think it's going to be about six years. And the fourth building is stressed to hold it. So we're, we're going to take out a few things in there, move things forward. When you get back there, and it'll, it'll be right there. How cool! They're going to they built the hangar doors to be wide enough, but not tall enough, so they have to cut off the tail. Oh, right okay. There. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that would be the next big thing. Yeah. 
Because you guys don't have a C5 here. C5? A C5. C5. Oh, uh, in fact, if you go up to the desk, there's a, a, a PA announcement on that. Uh -huh. and, and we'll be getting one. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll get one. The, the rumor is, well, every 17 years, the foundation wants to build a new building. Oh, okay. We donate the money. Right. And so the next one is supposed to be big enough to put the C5. That's a big airplane. I worked on that one for about 17 years. Oh, it's huge. Yeah, yeah it's I, a big airplane. I, I, I did a Space A flight in, in something. So, yeah, I noticed you got a C-17 parked out front, and I thought, okay, they just don't have a C-5 yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you seen the C-17? I haven't been out to that one, but I have seen them, I've seen them live. So. Yeah, but that one in particular, you look on the nose, and there are four or five movie cameras. Because it's been in two Iron Man movies. Really? Yeah. All right. So that's that's famous airplane. I might have to go check that out. Yeah. So, well, Andrew, it was yeah. good talking to you. Nice to meet Thank you. Thank you very much. better lit that's interesting maybe uh, newer technology maybe they'll re retrofit the other ones we have okay now this is something I've never seen never seen before this is very cool we can walk through a mock-up shuttle definitely have to hit that some rockets a Mercury spacecraft Apollo spacecraft this is the X-24. This is what I was telling you a little bit ago. If you saw, if you ever watched the Six Million Dollar Man, that's the airplane that he flew. So lifting body. Yes. I was just explaining to all my YouTube friends out there who've never seen Steve Austin and the Six Million Dollar Man. Six Man that he yes, That's the one. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but remember, we can rebuild him. <laughs> <laughs> so these are essentially airplanes without wings. So because of the shape of the aircraft, they provide lift and they can fly. Of course, the only one of its kind, the XB-70. There were only two of them ever made. And this is the only one that remains. The other one, of course, you can see on YouTube and various other places, you can see the video of that aircraft. Um, actually had a mid-air collision with an F-104 that was flying beside it, and it crashed. This was supposed to be a supersonic bomber. The wings... Um, as you can see, it's got a huge hinge right here, right along the edge, and in flight, this wing would go down, and it, it could provide a lot more lift and speed and things like that. But the Valkyrie, this thing, when I was here last, the Valkyrie had just moved into a hangar, but it usually sat outside out front for the longest time. That's the guy I need to follow around the museum and get narration from. Yeah. That's good. Dayton International. 
get ready to head out for a few hours of flying, get to go to Charlotte and then home. <laughs>